I got a set of lights recently and I had one of these little 3AA battery packs that drives the lights and I was looking at them and thinking they don't look like they're all wired in parallel, they look like they're, they're wired almost like traditional 24 volt lights. So um, it turns out they are. This thing is putting out 24 volts and it's doing it in quite an odd way now. I'll just cover this over so you can see it. Do you notice they're quite flickery? Quite annoyingly flickery in fact. That's almost visible to the human eye. It's quite a low frequency flickering. Now, the circuitry inside it, its there's not an awful lot inside it, just this little circuit board at the end. And I'll show you the schematic because I have taken it to bits. There's a surprise. And the surprising thing is just how little there is in it. Um, it's got what looks, to all intents and purposes, to be a standard 8-pin PIC12 microcontroller, which seems to be really common in Christmas lighting type applications. It's got a transistor, a very ordinary MPS 2222-42A uh, um, transistor, and a 220 micro Henry choke. I'm, I'm just going to actually take this circuit board out here and show you the back of it. And the transistor is being driven from the PIC microcontroller via this 2.2 nanofarad capacitor. Um, I'm guessing this is just to discharge the capacitor after each... I'm not 100% sure about this because not enough current would flow through that to keep that transistor on. I think really the point of the capacitor is that on each transition from the pink microcontroller it just gives that gate a quick jab just to actually pulse the coil. Um, let's see if we can get this out. Oh, he flattens it in the process. So really not a lot to it. There's the um, little output capacitor. Can I see what that says, the value of the electrolytic? <coughs> no, I can't. The text is really small. Oh, it's one megafarad. 50 volt, one megafarad. I'll just, I'll just add that to the drawing. So that's um, one megafarad. He drew it in rather badly. <laughs> this little diode is um, <coughs> Taking the output, the, when the transistor pulls the, the coil down um, and then goes back off again, the, the, there's a high voltage spike produced, which goes through that diode into this capacitor, and that's what ultimately ends up, uh, it sort of pumps that capacitor up and drives the LEDs. And they're just all wired in the sort of series parallel arrangement that, that you'd find eight LEDs in series, or seven LEDs in series, and repeated along the string of fair lights. Really, there's not an awful lot in here. There's the... Uh, there's a transistor, there's the little um, inductor down here, there's the PIC microcontroller, I'm guessing it's a PIC microcontroller, it's using all the same pin out again, but only using one output pin to do everything, no timer or anything involved in it. Uh, there's the tiny little capacitor that's uh, pulsing the transistor, and really, and the, the one in 4148 diode, really there's nothing in this, is there? It's so simple, it's actually really quite appealing. Now. I've not got an oscilloscope. I want to see what sort of frequency is coming out of this. It chops on and off at round about 50 hertz, but is that going to be enough to keep the LEDs lit? Maybe it is. Um, I thought it might have been a much higher frequency than that, because if you consider the Dual Thief runs at very high frequency, is the 50 hertz that's coming out actually bursts of high frequency, or is it actually just 50 hertz? I'm not 100% sure. I doubt it. Uh, I don't have an oscilloscope, so I can't find out. The only thing that comes to mind is maybe to write a bit of software for a PIC microcontroller and to swap it in myself and see if I can get the circuit running. But, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll play about with that later on. But it's quite a nice little circuit, very neat. And um, the current consumption is about 50 milliamps. Um, and so I said a battery lasts a good few days. It's, it's very good, very neat.